Thank you for your stay at Hartung Family Farms. Good morning. Good afternoon and evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. And today, 6.15, I'm heading up to the farm. It's Thursday after, it's Thursday, it's not afternoon. Thursday morning, it's the 25th. 4th 25th of February and we're brooming the cows home I'm gonna keep working till our cows are moved home today so what we're doing is I'm heading up a little bit earlier than I normally would Pat is actually selling a load of fat cattle so I'm actually gonna give you guys some video of that and then uh, later in the morning we're actually gonna bring all of the cows home from Bellevue because as we mentioned before our cows are actually gonna start to calve here in about probably a week or two the, we usually like them to start calving around March 10th so we don't want that to happen. We want to move them back about two weeks before that just because we don't want to have any cows calf in uh, up in Bellevue because there's there's no protection from the elements. I mean, it's getting warmer out. We had 40 degree weather these last couple of days. So the snow is really melting, which is fantastic. Cannot wait, but we need to get those cows home. So I'll see you guys up at the farm. Guys, I can see corn stalks. I haven't seen corn stalks in fields in almost a month. Woohoo! It's melting. Spring is just around the corner. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms, and you know it. It's beautiful, and it's Jackson County. The sun's getting up pretty good over here, over in the east. It's about 10 minutes to 7 on Thursday, February 25th. Today, I have a special guest coming. It's a surprise. You'll see him a little bit. We talked about it a little bit. I gave him a few shouts out. But anyway, today we are going to <clears throat> be moving cows from the creek up here, 45 of them, down to the birthing suites in Preston, Iowa. Ron's on his way up. We'll have two trailers running. So we'll end up with five loads of nine. We'll start taking down the vets. In Preston, they got a better setup down there with, with a better chute. So we'll take them down there, we'll preg check them, we'll make sure they're healthy, uh, made it through the winter okay, uh, get their shots. Well, so just getting up to the farm right now. Um, semi's not started. Pat's actually just checking the calves, or checking the mama cows. Brian's just walking over to go start up the semi, and hopefully we're gonna start moving cattle here in the next, well, when I say moving cattle, we're actually gonna hopefully start loading cattle here soon, because we got 35 of these colored critters heading to Joslin, Illinois, the Tyson meat packing plant. So we take uh, we take our cattle to three different packing plants. One in Tame, Illinois, I believe that's Iowa Select. Only Angus beef goes there, so only all the black cattle. Um, Tyson's in Joslin, Illinois is where we're taking, that's where probably 85 to 90% of our cattle goes. And we occasionally take cattle to Aurora as well, depending on the bids. So we're actually fortunate we have a couple of places within a couple hours that we can take cattle to that we can bid against. So, so yeah, 35 of these Charlays and whatever the red ones are called, I forget. but. These guys are gonna be heading out. So let's go ahead and start loading. Or get ready to start loading. And I don't have my coveralls right now because if you guys remember, flashback to a card right here where I uh, stepped in manure and got my boots and everything all soaked. That was fun, not really. All right, let's get going. Wanna know how much snow we had drifted through? It's four feet high of a snow in between where we normally walk. It's a lot. We've had anywhere from, I'd say rough guess, 16 to 24 inches anywhere out in the fields. So it's starting them out right now. We probably have eight, eight inches gone already. So you can start to see grafts and whatnot because we've had temperatures in the forties and even lows above freezing at night. So we've had a lot of melting these last couple of days, but still got another week or two to go before we can start thinking about everything getting dried off and melted. Uh, biggest thing is the preg check them, make sure they're pregnant and they're not open. Reason why we started doing that is because uh, Last year, I want to say, it was our first year doing it, and you have you get into May, and you just still got three, four, five cows that have a calf yet, and you figure out, well, are they open or not, and then you check them, and then they they are open. This way, you know ahead of time, and you can actually write those numbers down, and then they can be the first ones to get kicked out into the pasture to get it with the bulls to get pregnant for next year. So it works out pretty good. Um, like I said, it's it's about 20 degrees out right now, and it's going to be no wind. That's a good thing. So. As you can see, I'm in my sweatshirt. It's not bad. Hart Tongue Family Farm sweatshirt. And we are going to head to the farm. We'll bring the tractor down with the loader bucket. Like I said, but last time when we drove in those stakes, it wasn't the sturdiest going in there because there was a lot of frost. But, so we'll bring the tractor down in case we need it. We'll pick up our special guest and then we'll head out to the farm and we'll start getting the cows separated and in. And then when the tra uh, trailers get here, they'll back up down in there. We'll get them loaded up and get them out of here. Hopefully with a little luck, it's 
by noon we should have them all out of here so okay we'll talk to you here a little bit all right let's get it going pat's gonna back the semi around the grandma's basically just gonna back it around that we got a load and shoot over there so he's gonna back that around brian's gonna take the semi in i got the cattle prods oh, someone already grabbed them and then yeah we'll uh load these cattle up with the gopro on my head see if i can get you guys some good footage this guy he's gonna basically pull in and back all the way around i'm gonna help him out So Brian just went in there, he's getting the cattle ready. These are the cattle we're gonna take. And Pat's basically setting up the trailer. So there's basically different compartments that we'll put. We'll put three up front. There's a front compartment right over the wheels. It's basically got, it's like a half level. Then we got two levels running the base of the trailer and another half level over the wheels. So wherever the wheels are at, there's one level. Everywhere else, there's two. So we'll basically run them up top, down the front, and we'll fill the top, raise it, fill the bottom, and fill the back. One less this time. So, two up front then? Oh, we'll four up front. Oh, four up front? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, get in there. There you go, come on, let's go. There you go. There you go. Leave one, leave one. Yep. Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, we said to put that pen back there and look down here. It's so much easier. <laughs> I used to move that date and put it here. And oh, jeez. There you go. Nice and easy. There you go, boy. Come on, come on. There we go. Follow later. Oh, come on. There you go. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And just so you know, you guys are probably curious how we actually selected these cattle. What we actually do is we just kind of walk the yards and we figure out which ones are the A, the right color, the right breed. So with this load going to Joslin, we can have all colors. We wanted to have as many non-Angus as possible. So we basically chose the fattest and the most non-Angus. We just sorted them out and just kind of walked them into this yard. And sometimes we actually got to get them from other yards to bring them in. So that's kind of how we sorted them. Hey, we're out the farm. Uh, sun's starting to come up pretty good. Lots of snow as you can see. I got snow for sale if you want to buy some. Cheap. You got a haul though. My special guest today, he's in the sunlight. Cody Severin. He's going to help me out today. I gave him a few shout outs in the past. Uh, he was working for the Jackson County Sheriff Department. He retired there to come work for me with the Bellevue Police Department where he started out. About, about eight, nine years ago, ten years ago? Yeah, ten years. Ten years ago, he was working for me. He went to the county, now he's back. So, Cody, what do you got to say? Just here to help the bud man, and we're going to have a good day. Have a good day. We better give a shout out to Raider. Oh, I don't know if he deserves one. <laughs> I think he does. We got the new Holland going. Got the bucket on. I think what we might do is we might put the forks in the bucket so we can have them down there. So when we get down there, get all done, I can actually tear the corral down. And that way we can just put the gates on the forks and bring them back. You start loading, you know, got everything. Yeah, they're already in there, you don't have to worry about. Once they hear, other ones getting in the truck. I just probably use the stick and you guys can have the two rods. So what we just did was we basically just got all the cattle that we're going to load. So 34, I believe, my counter, right? So we got them all locked in pens. Because once cattle here, people, other cattle going on the truck, they do not want to move at all. So... We got them all locked in. So now, now the fun part. This is where the colorful language and uh, stuff that you guys won't hear, the working words as Brian Brown says. This is where they come out because getting cattle in the pens are relatively easy, but getting them in the trailer can be a massive, massive pain in the butt. So we'll see how this goes. Let's 
Try four, see how it goes here. Nice paddle. So we'll use basically a paddle and two cattle prods. What a cattle prod is, is it basically gives, just gives them a jolt of electricity. Just a little zap, nothing that'll harm them. Just enough to basically shock them to keep them moving because once cattle stop, they're almost impossible to get moving. So basically what I'll do is once they funnel them in, I'll be right at the, the chute. I'll just give them a little zap just to keep them moving so that way they don't stop where only one cattle can go and just cause a bottleneck and really make everything bad. One jump and horrible. Trying to turn around. So now I'll just crouch by in here. As soon as he gets one going, I'll hop up and make sure it keeps moving. one going once they start going they'll go yep there they are over here there's a bunch of them up here so what we'll do is we'll take them all back down get them inside the gate hole there give them a little bit of feed and then we will uh, load them up they're looking good we'll get them calved here hopefully in the next month and a half and we'll go from there okay that was the somewhat easy part got all the cows out of here into here then what we'll do is get the trailers down, we'll bring 18 into here, load them up and bring the rest into here. Hopefully it works out slick, I don't know, we'll try it. So like I said, I'll just crouch by in here, I got this little crack, I can see when a cow gets moving. And I'll basically just zap them to keep them moving right here. Get moving. Come on. Let's go. All right. Top's loaded. Let's load the bottom. I completely forgot to turn on my Okapa hand warmer. My hands are freezing. So I'll just wait right here. Yeah, my hands are a little cold. Whew. Thank you, Okapa, for these hand. These rechargeable hand warmers are actually freaking awesome because it doubles as a hand warmer and as a charger. <sighs> Link will be in the description if you guys are curious. Yeah, you can kind of see my hands are a little cold near the tips. Kind of see the trailer shakes. Right now we got 18 cattle, four up front, 14 up top. Put another 14 in the bottom, or 13 or so. And then we'll uh, put two in the back. How many in the bottom? 15 and two. 15 and two. Once they start going in the hole, they'll be fine. But sometimes you have to stand there and you got to reach through it. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, hip. Come on. Hip. to go underneath. Huh? Forgot to go underneath in that side door. Oh yeah, shoot. That could have been very bad. Last rodeo for this pair of this chair. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. 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 Start coming down. Okay, Bob, start coming down the ball. All right, there we go. There we go. Get 
Hey guys, I just wanted to clarify something real quick. So we do not like using cattle prods whatsoever. We avoid them at all costs. And the only time that we use them is when loading fat cattle out. And the reason for that is because fat cattle at that point weigh 15, 1600 pounds. They can easily flatten myself at 220 or anything like that. So it, we need to keep cattle moving. So like I said, it's a short jap, zap. It doesn't hurt them long term. It just gives them a little bit of jump just to get, keep them moving. So that's the big reason. Like I said, we hate using it. We don't use them on anyone else other than the fat cattle you're moving out. And we do follow all rules and guidelines kind of laid out by uh, different researchers or whatnot so you never zap the same cow multiple times in a row it's not a long zap it's basically just a quick jolt to keep moving <laughs> okay what we're gonna do is we'll leave this hay cart sit here that way it's out of the way we'll go up and get the side by side bring that down for extra support and then we'll uh they're leaving Preston now. They're bringing up two trailers, so they should be here in about a half hour, 40 minutes. So life is good. So far, everything is going good. Cody, you gonna say anything? We're ready to get this show on the road. Did you hear that, everybody? Cody says get the show on the Hold road. So. Last load for the week. Three loads left to go for the year. And we're done until November of next year. November, December. Is it, is it not latching? Oh, I just has to go over center. I got a song. Down here at eight o'clock. Okay. Ooh. Guys, both together. And yep. We should be able to just drive in there and pull or turn around with that lane we got. Yep, we'll do. I don't want to jinx it, but that was uh, really, really easy. Clean my boots off a little bit in the snow. Muck boots. These things are awesome. Insulated, waterproof. They're expensive, but they are awesome. And Pat's gonna head out. He's heading to Joslin, Illinois. Nice sweatshirt, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> How long of a trip is that, you think? What time you'll be back? Just depends on running into a line. It's usually, between, it's usually right at three hours. No, that's not bad. No. He'll probably be done by the time before we're done. I'm hoping I'm back in time to help get the rest of them heifers out down there. All right, well done. So Brian's gonna start doing chores. I'm gonna head up to Bellevue here shortly with the gooseneck trailer and we have our nice good buddy Kevin Huffman's gonna help us. He's, he's gonna use his gooseneck trailer and truck. Uh, Brian can start doing chores and by the time we have all the cattle stuff done by noon and figure out what, what we need to do for this afternoon. Bye bye Moo Moos. Thank you for your stay at Hartung Family Farms. Also, let me talk a little bit about prices. So cattle get sold by the pound. So basically we sold these cattle. So we had 35 cattle. These cattle weighed an average of about 1,500 pounds. Um, usually your steers are around 15 to 1550 poundage or so and heifers are around 1400 or so. So we sold 35 cattle at 1500 pounds a piece for $1.10 per pound on this load. So that made us $57,500. Well, roughly sixty thousand dollars. So that is how we made sixty thousand dollars. Okay, we brought the forks down. So when we're done here, get all these fence picked up, the gates. Right now he's gonna drive through here and put that bucket up against the seam here just in case, just for more support. And these are the new calves. This the yard is completely empty. These are the new calves. We're gonna feed them out for the next year or so. We'll probably start taking, sorting and taking the fat bunches out next November, December. Man, I hate this time of year. It's just slush and ice everywhere. It melts during the day and then freezes at night. It's hard on tires, hard on equipment. It's hard on the people walking. Yeah, like I said, I don't want to jinx it, but that was uh, extremely easy, almost too easy. So what I'm gonna do is change the plans. Brian's gonna actually come up and help load just because with these cattle, we just need all the help we can get because you don't want anything to happen. I mean, these are these are the money makers this time of the year. These next two weeks are critical for these cattle, for our mama cows, because they're gonna calve in the next two weeks. So we just need to take the utmost care. So Brian's gonna be running trailer, trucking, gooseneck, and so is uh, our buddy Kevin Huffman. I'm gonna stay up there with uh, Cody Sieverding. Him and I are gonna basically just watch the cattle, make sure nothing happens. And my dad's gonna go up to the vet with him and make sure all the administrative stuff's going good. Look at the shine on that Magnum. We gotta do a little cleaning of that 70 before we put it away. Back this thing out. Definitely gonna need some gas in this thing. So this is, we're pulling our, I believe, 20 foot Featherlight Gooseneck trailer. We've had this thing for a long time. 
Okay, so we got 18 in here. So now we just gotta wait for the trailers to come and we'll be set. Cody's reinforcing the gate back there, so that doesn't happen. You almost didn't want to start. She's a cold one. And nothing I can use in there for a scraper. I just let her warm up. Oh, just try and warm this truck up so I can get moving. When I warm it up, just frost the ice. Oh, wow, well, that's thick frost. Kitty, meow. 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 Homemade ice scraper. Good enough. All right, let's get her moving. We got cows to move and a vet appointment at 9.30 to hit. Stick as much gas in here as possible, but I think the breather's plugged or something on this tank and it uh, doesn't fill up very quickly, very easily. There's Kevin. Morning. All right, we're rolling. Everything's filled up with gas. Got two trailers in this truck. We're gonna head to Bellevue and we are going to move some cows home. Not gonna quit until the cows come home. Coconut River bottoms. Here's the Makokota River and this extremely tiny bridge, but the ice is starting to melt. Let's go! Let's go! Help! Help! Come on! Come on! Help! Give it! You f 